people can indeed commit appalling acts. In a distressing case, a man named Jim, overwhelmed with bitterness and malice, engaged in a heartless deed against a vulnerable dog. Initially, Jim developed a strong aversion to Brutus, a dog his partner, Kate, had brought into their home. His dislike for Brutus was evident, he detested the dog and was tired of the ongoing disputes with Kate about keeping Brutus. One day, resolved to eliminate the dog without sparking another dispute with Kate. Jim devised a scheme, he took Brutus for a drive to a remote, expansive park about an hour from their home. To Brutus, this might have appeared as an enjoyable excursion, however, Jim's motives were anything but harmless. After a brief walk deeper into the park, Jim committed a shocking act, he tied Brutus to a tree using the long leash and then heartlessly abandoned him. Bewildered and frightened, Brutus watched as Jim left whimpering and frantically trying to free himself. Jim paused momentarily when Brutus ceased whimpering and wagged his tail, possibly hoping Jim would come back. Jim simply chuckled and kept walking. He left the park feeling a sense of relief, believing he had addressed one of the sources of tension in his relationship with Kate. The roots of Jim's bitterness trace back to before Brutus's arrival. The couple had been arguing often, especially regarding their living situation. Kate had recently purchased a house and moved in and Jim found it unreasonable to keep paying rent instead of moving in with her. However, Kate was not prepared for them to live together, which irked Jim. The strain in their relationship intensified during a housewarming party, which, in Jim's view, seemed overly centered on Kate instead of celebrating them as a couple. The situation deteriorated when one of Kate's friends, Brian, whom Jim disliked, gifted a puppy at the housewarming. Kate's growing emotional attachment to the puppy further fueled Jim's resentment as he viewed the dog as yet another barrier in their relationship. Ultimately, Jim's decision to abandon Brutus was a misguided endeavor to assert control and remove what he saw as a hindrance in their relationship. However, this act only underscored the extent of his spitefulness and his inability to manage the situation in a constructive manner. At the housewarming party, Brian had warmly greeted Kate, and then, with a significant gesture, introduced the puppy that would soon become a contentious point in their relationship, Jim made it clear that he would only consider giving a pet to someone if he knew them as well as he knew Kate. He was conscious of her enthusiasm for having a dog in her new home. The entire scenario was unbearable for Jim, prompting him to leave the gathering early, developing a strong aversion to the dog from then on. It had been almost a year since the housewarming and he still experienced a pang of annoyance every time he recalled how all the gifts were exclusively for her. Jim had subtly suggested several times that they should move in together, but Kate had never invited him. He believed her family's disapproval might have influenced her decision, yet he was familiar with Kate's kind nature. When he mentioned that his apartment was flooded due to a plumbing issue, she instantly offered him a place to stay, which he had hoped for. He later admitted to her that he had ended his lease because the repairs were taking too long hoping she would see how well they lived together and choose not to ask him to move out. Over time, Jim began making adjustments to Kate's house to better accommodate his preferences, convincing himself that it was also in her best interest to have a man in the house. Everything seemed to be going smoothly, except for Brutus, the dog. Brutus appeared to dislike him as much as he disliked the dog. Always gnawing on everything, despite Jim's objections, Kate continued to prioritize her relationship with Brutus over theirs asserting that Brutus had been there first. Jim found it ridiculous that she would value an animal over their relationship, now that they were living together. The dog was a part of his life too, but Kate insisted that he should not discipline Brutus. This disagreement became a continuous source of tension. Even when Jim calmly suggested that things would need to change once they were married, Kate responded that marriage was a far-off possibility. She also reminded him that his stay was only temporary while he looked for a new place, underscoring that Brutus's presence was permanent. Jim felt deeply slighted by this, convinced that the dog was at the heart of their relationship issues. Jim felt compelled to take drastic actions to salvage their relationship. Believing it was for their mutual benefit, their recent spat over Brutus had left Kate so distressed that she hadn't prepared dinner the previous night. The following morning, she was still clearly annoyed. She mentioned that their friend Brian would soon arrive to take their dog Brutus out for a walk and a visit. She expressed that they needed to have a discussion upon her return, although Jim suspected that by that time, there might be nothing left to say. He saw this as an ideal moment to carry out a plan that, in his view, would eliminate the primary obstacle in their relationship. One day, Jim took a day off from work, driven by a strategy he had been mulling over. 
he left for his job earlier than his partner, Kate, and managed to get home before her to set the stage for what was to come. He prepared their dog Brutus, who appeared excited, for what seemed a normal walk. Jim then strategically left the gate of their home slightly open, placed the enthusiastic dog in his car, and drove off. He drove to a large park located roughly an hour away from their residence, renowned for its wide open spaces and wildlife. He located a remote area within the park and securely tied Brutus to a tree, aware of the dangers of leaving the dog alone in such surroundings. Jim convinced himself that his actions were not cruel, rationalizing that the frequent visitors to the park, combined with Brutus's likely barking, would ensure the dog was found quickly. Having left Brutus tied up, Jim indulged himself with a movie, viewing the outing as a reward for executing his plan, which he believed would both simplify his life and divert Kate from initiating a grave conversation he wished to avoid. He deemed his scheme beneficial for both parties. Upon returning home later that evening, he made sure to arrive after Kate, she was visibly upset, tearfully explaining that Brutus was missing. She recounted that Brian had visited, noticed the open gate, and deduced that the dog had escaped. Jim feigned worry, consoling Kate gently while subtly insinuating that perhaps Brian might have inadvertently let Brutus out. Although Kate initially withdrew from him, Jim spoke softly, displaying empathy to comfort her, yet, deep inside, Kate had been sensing for some time that their relationship was drawing to a close. She was merely waiting for Jim to find another place to live. The manner in which Jim managed the situation with Brutus solidified her resolve. She realized she needed to ask him to move out. Despite his prior displays of kindness, she couldn't shake off her suspicions about his involvement in Brutus's disappearance, especially given his recent behavior. In the subsequent days, Jim went out of his way to alleviate her anxiety by showing extraordinary tenderness. He brought her chocolates and flowers to boost her morale and even volunteered to create and distribute flyers throughout the neighborhood, hoping someone might have spotted Brutus. Kate was grateful for Jim's gestures, which offered her fleeting glimpses of the man she had originally fallen for, yet, she couldn't rid herself of the suspicion that this recent kindness was merely another facade as she hung some of the missing dog posters on their street and in nearby areas. Her doubts about Jim's authenticity only grew, while affixing a poster to a lamppost across the street, the kind elderly woman from across the way came over to start a conversation that could potentially alter everything, emerging from her residence, she revealed a disturbing piece of information to Kate, she had seen Jim acting suspiciously as he took their dog Brutus away while returning from work, conflicted about whether to inform Kate initially. She ultimately decided she could no longer keep this secret. Kate deserved to know the truth about the man she lived with. Kate was shocked by the revelation, yet it eerily confirmed her lingering suspicions about Jim's narrative. Deep down, she clung to a slight hope that there might be a chance to recover Brutus, particularly if Jim had been mistreating him. The idea of what actions she might take if Brutus had been harmed filled her with dread, before Kate could confront Jim. She received a surprising call from a veterinary clinic, unbeknownst to Jim, Kate had previously had Brutus microchipped, a decision that now became pivotal, the clinic had her contact details from the chip's registry, she was resolved to reclaim her cherished pet and then take drastic measures to change her life, with a sense of urgency, she contacted Brian, and they drove for over an hour to the veterinarian's office, posters and search efforts had proved inadequate. Brutus was found far beyond where Kate had anticipated, a distance that curiously matched Jim's earlier suggestions. Upon their arrival at the clinic, the atmosphere was fraught with emotion. Brutus, who had been discovered by hikers tied up in a park, was physically unharmed but visibly shaken. He showed little interest in his surroundings, clearly affected by the ordeal. Surrounded by unfamiliar faces and the staff of the veterinary clinic, Brutus lay in his kennel, devoid of energy. Avoiding eye contact, his spirit apparently shattered. The initial belief among the staff was that he had endured cruelty from a previous owner. Yet, when Kate walked in and conversed with the receptionist, a dramatic change occurred in Brutus. At the sound of her voice, he howled and scrambled within his kennel. And the moment the vet nurse opened the gate, he dashed towards the sound he recognized so well, ignoring the need for a leash. Brutus sprinted directly to Kate barking with joy and leaping into her arms as she knelt down, overwhelmed by relief and happiness. The emotional reunion left no doubts about their deep connection. The fear of possibly never seeing Brutal again had haunted Kate, making their reunion an intensely moving conclusion to her stressful experience. 
As Brutus tenderly licked her tears, she embraced him tightly, thankful for his safe return and determined to do whatever necessary to secure their future happiness together. Although she often felt the absence of Jim, it was Brutus's return that now filled her with immense joy. She was eager to ensure his well-being, asking the vet about any special care he might need following his ordeal. Her concern further proved her innocence in his abandonment. Clearly, the responsibility lay elsewhere. The location where Brutus was found was remote and not commonly known to have surveillance. It was Jim who had left the dog there. But they needed to review the trail camera footage to fully grasp what had happened. Despite her suspicions about Jim, the footage shocked Kate profoundly. It showed Jim leading Brutus, tying the distressed dog to a tree, and then callously walking away, laughing as he left the whimpering animal behind. This cruel act was the last straw for Kate. She resolved to end her relationship with Jim. There was no room for discussion. She demanded he leave her home and her life for good. The haunting image of Brutus's suffering at Jim's hands was indelible. Her friends and family had been right about Jim from the start though she had been blinded by his seemingly redeeming qualities. Initially, Kate had believed Jim to be kind and considerate, however, she came to realize that these qualities were merely deceptive tactics to conceal his actual manipulative character. By the time Jim arrived home later that evening, Kate had already packed all his possessions and placed them on the driveway, she had changed the locks, and despite his efforts to get inside, she steadfastly refused to let him in. Jim threatened to take legal action but unknown to him, Kate had already researched the legalities, since he had no formal agreement to live there and had never paid any rent or utilities, he had no legal standing, in the eyes of the law, he was merely a guest who had overstayed his welcome. When Jim finally gathered his belongings and departed, Kate braced herself to feel sorrow at the conclusion of their long relationship, to her surprise, she experienced a profound sense of liberation instead, it felt as if a massive burden had been removed from her shoulders, she had reclaimed her life, as her dog Brutus cuddled up to her, she celebrated her newfound freedom to reconnect more frequently with her close ones. In the ensuing weeks, Kate and Brutus grew even closer. She took him along wherever she went, delighting in their restored connection. Far from being heartbroken, Kate felt relieved and eager to reconstruct her life with her cherished friends and family, and of course, her beloved dog. She had previously distanced herself from her social circle, a mistake she was determined not to repeat. Just as her life began to stabilize, an unexpected event occurred, while gardening in her backyard. Planting happy flowers, which she had always wanted despite Jim's dismissive comments about them, Kate enjoyed a wonderful afternoon listening to her favorite tunes. This was her way of ensuring her own happiness, no longer adhering to Jim's discouraging words. Suddenly, her tranquil moment was disrupted. Brutus started to growl threateningly. Kate's heart raced as she turned around and saw Jim standing there. He had entered through the side gate she had forgotten to secure. The sight of him was startling, and he was not alone. A sleek black lab accompanied him. Initially, Jim started in his typically gentle and charming tone, announcing that he had brought another dog to compensate for Brutus, asserting that this new canine was much more obedient than Brutus could ever hope to be. However, when he realized that Brutus had returned, unbeknownst to him that Kate had retrieved the dog, he was not relieved but rather enraged. It appeared that Jim was upset because he believed Kate had favored the dog over him, a decision he found unacceptable. He issued a command to the Black Lab, which was trained for security purposes. Initially, the dog paused, not detecting any danger from Kate. However, under Jim's insistent orders, the reluctant dog made a move towards her. Brutus quickly intervened, positioning himself protectively between Kate and the advancing dog, with a defensive instinct. Brutus clasped the lab by the scruff and pinned it down. The lab, lacking any real desire to engage, was easily subdued by Brutus, who wasn't biting but merely restraining him to shield Kate. As Jim's rage intensified, he yelled for the lab to retaliate, yet Brutus firmly kept his grip, averting a potentially harmful conflict. At this point, Brutus wasn't just defending himself, he was safeguarding his owner, ensuring her safety. Jim's commands became more desperate as his scheme fell apart. Showcasing a scene where devotion and protective instincts overcame hostility and deceit, in a shocking and disturbing twist, Jim stormed into Kate's yard, knife in hand, his anger evident, his overt aggression frightened Kate, marking the first instance she truly feared him, as he moved towards her, her loyal dog Brutus torn between the lab and his owner, issued a menacing growl at Jim, 
Brutus, the Labrador, hesitated, uncertain whether to leave his canine companion or defend Kate. His focus remained on Jim, assessing his every action, it was uncertain how far Jim would go in his anger. Suddenly, the atmosphere dramatically shifted as police officers burst through the shattered gate. Kate's vigilant neighbor had seen Jim sneaking in through the back fence and, sensing immediate danger, had quickly alerted the authorities. The police arrived in time to intercept Jim as he menacingly advanced on Kate with the knife, clearly intent on causing harm. They promptly detained him. Jim was subsequently charged with animal neglect, trespassing, and attempted assault. Relieved, Kate watched as the police led him away, leaving behind the black Labrador Jim had brought. Although the officers suggested calling animal control, Kate opted against it. Brutus, now serene, kept a watchful eye on the Labrador, displaying no signs of aggression, speaking softly to the visibly shaken dog, whose tail flickered with a faint wag. She uncovered his gentle and friendly demeanor. Despite his disheveled and blood-streaked appearance which suggested danger, the Labrador was not the menacing beast Jim had intended to use to frighten Kate. In fact, the dog seemed scared and instantly relaxed when Kate spoke to him. Brutus, showing curiosity rather than hostility, gave the Labrador a comforting lick, which made it evident that the dog was not naturally aggressive. It was later revealed that Jim had adopted the dog from a shelter with the intention of using him to control or possibly intimidate Kate through training, but this scheme had backfired. With Jim now incarcerated, the two dogs enjoyed the freedom of Kate's backyard, choosing not to return the Labrador to the shelter. Kate adopted him, believing it would be unjust to send him away. Although she had ended a relationship, she had found a faithful new friend in this unexpected turn of events. The exchange had proved to be immensely beneficial. After watching this story, how do you feel? Feel free to share with us in the comments section below. Above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.